Hello and welcome to this uh, Cyber Reason webinar. My name is Roberto Arrico. I'm a senior sales engineer for Africa and it's great to be able to talk you through today the Cyber Reason platform and perform an attack simulation. Um, the other half of the session will be presented by my colleague uh, Ahmed El Kosiri talking about um, investigations and threat hunting etc. So uh, it's nice to be able to chat to you today. Please feel free to leave questions or Alternatively, uh, you can come and ask us questions afterwards, uh, but without too much further ado, I'd like to kick off. So when we talk about Cyber Reason, I think it's important to understand where Cyber Reason came from. So we were founded in 2012, um, and in that, in sort of the eight years following, we've managed to grow to a global organization. We have presence in uh, most of the major continents. Uh, as I said, I myself am sitting in South Africa, we're headquartered in Boston, uh, US, and we have 24 by 7 global coverage. Um, we're very, uh, very highly regarded by third party endorsers such as Gartner, MITRE, Forrester, etc., and NSS Labs. And that's a bit about us. So, what is Cyber Reason? Well, Cyber Reason is a purpose built single agent defense platform. And what we mean by that is with a single agent, it's a piece of software that you install on an endpoint. And when we say endpoint, we mean a laptop, a desktop, a server, uh, Linux, Mac, iOS, Android, etc. It's a piece of software that sits and performs a multitude of functions, depending what you need. So those functions could be preventative capabilities, next gen AV, uh, endpoint controls, uh, signature based AV, ransomware prevention, etc. It could be EDR in terms of detection and response, uh, forensic investigations, incident response. It could be um, analytics when you want to perform threat hunting, when you want to perform um, analytics on the endpoint as to what the endpoint does, all underpinned by a single platform. So there's no need to deploy new software, there's no need to create new configurations. Basically, as soon as the sensor is on that endpoint, you are able to take advantage of these functionalities all driven through the um, web-based dashboard. We can be deployed as a cloud solution, we can be deployed as an on-premise solution, and the same functionality exists whether you're cloud or on-prem. Um, we also have intelligence services that underpin our platform. So our um, team Nocturnus, our threat researching team, uh, we can provide managed services as well, as well as cyber assessment and uh, response services. So it's a full range uh, that we can provide as cyber reason, not just software, but services as well. And at a very high level, this is what cyber reason looks like. As attacks occur, and not necessarily just attacks, but behavior in general occurs, our sensor is on those endpoints providing multi-layered endpoint prevention in terms of behavioral detections, as well as deception technologies for ransomware. And we are collecting raw data. Now that doesn't mean we're collecting your config files, that doesn't mean we're collecting actual Word documents, et cetera. What it means is we are collecting data about data. So what actually has happened on this endpoint? And when we collect this, we send it to our cross machine correlation engine. That's our secret source. That's our, um, our, our magic software where we combine artificial intelligence, machine learning modules, threat intelligence as well. And we're able to correlate your data in more than just a traditional um, flat database structure. The cross machine correlation engine is a 3D in memory graph database. So essentially data is correlated amongst itself, amongst other bits of data, and it gives us a really high fidelity and a high confidence when something occurs. And to notify you of that, we generate what we call a malop, a malicious operation. And this malicious operation is a single notification which contains information of all impacted endpoints, all impacted users, and allows you to quickly and visually see a timeline of behavior as it progressed, of lateral movement, of network communications, etc., all visualized through our web-based defense console. And from that very same console, you're able to take uh, a remediation step. You're able to isolate a machine. You're able to uh, quarantine a file or stop a process, etc. And thanks to cross-machine correlation, when you click apply, that command can go out to all or a subset of the affected endpoints. It's incredibly rapid. You're able to see more, you're able to stop more, and you're able to do more through that defense console 
really, really rapidly. Um, and obviously, yes, you know, we're a great technology, but we should not be the only technology. So in order to integrate with your security ecosystem, in order to um, com combine our technology with what you currently have, we do provide integrations with uh, well-known SIM, SOAR and other vendors, as well as our uh, API, which allows you to pull data out of cyber reason for use elsewhere. So how do we get to this malicious operation? How do we identify it? Well, it all starts with data. It starts with understanding what is actually occurring. So that's the data from your endpoints that we take and we turn into facts. And these facts are just a statement of what happened. So it was this endpoint, it was that user, it was this registry key, etc. There's no good or bad at this point. It's purely an understanding of what we've collected. We add in indicators of compromise. Uh, we add in behavioral detections from our threat intelligence. And that all goes into the in-memory graph database. That's that cross-machine correlation engine I spoke about. And in there, the data, the facts are analyzed. They are looked at how they correlate and how they uh, relate to each other. And from there, we generate evidence. And again, evidence is neither good nor bad. There's no point alerting you at this point. There's no point telling you that something bad has happened because all we have is a statement of the order the facts happened in. Uh, this user started this process. Uh, this endpoint made this connection, etc. From that evidence, we again correlate with known threat intelligence. We correlate against the MITRE attack framework and we generate suspicions. And this is where it gets interesting because these suspicions are what drive the malop. So when that notification comes through, it contains all the information down through suspicions and evidence of what has happened, in what order these facts occurred and how many endpoints and users have been affected. And this is all happening completely automated. This is all happening in real time, or near to real time in our AI hunting engine. So there's no need for you to do these correlations yourself. There's no need for you to um, go hunting through all the data. It's done automatically. However, should you want to. We do provide a very easy to understand and intuitive uh, graphical search interface that allows you to query the data that we've already collected. So if there's new threat intelligence, if you want to do threat hunting, etc., that information is available to you right at your fingertips. So that's how we get to this malloc. That's how we see the data. And what I'm going to, how I'm going to demonstrate this to you right now is by doing an attack simulation. So what I'm planning on doing is simulating the steps an attacker takes in a typical type of attack or breach scenario. Now, attackers don't necessarily take all of these steps. They might do them in a different order. But what I'm planning on doing here is I've done the external reconnaissance as the attacker. So I know the organization, I know the people, um, and I've crafted a specific phishing email with a malicious Excel document on it. I'm going to email that out and hoping some user clicks on it. When they do, that's the initial penetration done, taken care of. There will then be communication back to my attacker's machine where I can run my commands. Communication to command and control. And from there, I'm gonna create a compromised user. I'm gonna do some network browsing, process injection, etc. All the typical steps, trying to get to the CEO's machine where I can then either steal data or I can uh, run ransomware and encrypt, causing some kind of damage as well as covering my tracks and deleting the logs. So in a really quick um, time frame, that's what I plan on doing. Obviously, these types of attacks typically happen on a much larger scale and over a bigger period of time. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to my attack simulation and my lab and what we can do. So moving quickly, I have, oh, excuse me. I have my, uh, Let's put that that side. My cyber reason dashboard, known as our discovery board, empty, no malops to, to speak of yet. Nothing's actually happened. I have my victim one machine. This is my um, executive assistant whose name is Robert. I have my uh, attacker machine. It's just a Kali Linux box. If you're not familiar with Kali Linux, it's a collection of um, penetration testing tools, things like Metasploit, etc., which is actually what I'm using to use for in security testing and security training. And then I also have my CEO's machine, Maria. Now this is running Windows 7 purely to show that Cyber Reason is backwards compatible and we can provide capabilities on older operating systems as well. 
I would also like to point out that the um, policies that we've set on cyber reason are in a detect only mode. Um, we've got no prevention enabled purely because if it was, we would pretty much have a 30 second demonstration. The first step would then be blocked and there's not really much else to talk about. So this is in a purely monitor only mode, but I'd like to stress that if we saw it, we're able to protect against it. Okay, let me just rearrange my windows here so it makes a little bit more sense. And away we go. So the scenario we have set up is Robert has come into the office, um, fired up his laptop, opened up um, his Outlook, opened up Firefox, his normal thing. And in his inbox, he sees a recruitment plan for 2020. Looks quite interesting. He's quite obviously um, concerned, people being recruited, uh, changes being made. So he goes in and opens it up. Um, again, most users know they shouldn't be opening these things, but you know, you know, users are users. So in order to see this, he enables editing and he goes over to the tab here that says, well, here are the people being replaced. Now, as the attacker, I've crafted this list specifically for the people I've targeted, hoping that they're nosy enough to go, oh dear, I want to find out who is replacing me. So they're going to enable the macro, right? So that's exactly what Robert does. He enables the macro. He gets the standard Windows you know, wheel of patience as you are, and he waits for something to happen. Now, what he's not seeing is in the background, we are actually, this part of what this uh, Excel does is it runs a domain generation algorithm. That means it's trying to generate a dynamic URL to match something, to bypass traditional static firewalls, etc. And we'll know it's worked when we see a, sorry, I don't know if you can see that because the camera's in the way, we can see a connection has come in here. So he's downloaded an XML file. And again, that's quite important, it's an XML. This is not an executable. This is nothing that's gonna actually run on the endpoint, but it is a file that contains instructions to run PowerShell in memory. So again, looking at the running processes, all you would see is MS build. Not to get too far into the technical, but the uh, long and short of it is we now have session one opened. So if I interact with the session, I can see that uh, I, I now have an active session on this machine. And the first thing I wanna do is, find out who I am and where I am. So as the attacker, I can see I'm in user space. I'm on as user demo Robert E. Um, I now need to find out which machine I'm on, what's around me, where can I go? And in order to do that kind of reconnaissance and scanning, I don't want to be too noisy on the network or I want to look like I'm supposed to be doing things that require network traffic. So what I'm gonna do here is my initial is to say, show me the running processes so that I can disguise my footprints. And I get a whole long list of everything running on that endpoint and I can see this firefox.exe. So brilliant, I'm gonna disguise myself as a web browser. Okay, simple commands, migrate into that process, make it look like the behavior I'm doing is actually from Firefox. And there you go, completed successfully. So now, if I run my network scan, and again, execute net view, it's a Windows command. There's nothing new that I've, I've done to this machine that isn't already built in. And it's come back and told me that there's a CEO's machine and Robert's machine. Excellent, so I have my target, I know how I'm gonna get there. Um, I need to find out the path, the mechanism that I can use as the attacker. So again, a simple command to get the system information. And it comes back to say, this is Windows 10, it's this build version, etc. So. I can see as the attacker, this is not a newly patched, completely up-to-date system, which is quite common in enterprise environments. Patches are usually a few versions behind, but equally um, I can go and check the Microsoft vulnerability reports. I can search the internet. I can, if I really want to be cool, go to the dark web and I can have a look at what vulnerabilities exist on this machine. And the one that I'm going to use is actually a fairly uh, simple one which allows me to use task scheduler. So I'm going to run my privilege escalation script, which again should return a session with administrative uh, functions. So I've now compromised this machine through my malicious Excel. I've managed to migrate into a process. I've done some network reconnaissance and now I've escalated my privileges. So 
in a second. This can take a little bit of time to run. I have a look at the user ID. It hasn't quite loaded yet. Give it a few more seconds to run. But in that user ID, I'll see that I am now the uh, local admin. So it's the system account. And once I'm the system account, it's pretty much game over. Into authority system. So basically, this endpoint is now my endpoint is the attacker. I can do what I like on it. So let's pause there for a second and let's have a look at how many opportunities have we had to stop this attack. So we'll go over to Cyber Reason quickly. We'll give this a refresh. And you can already see there's some malops, some bubbles. So they're very small at the moment. They only apply to one affected endpoint there. But what we can see is we've already had seven opportunities here with Cyber Reason to stop this attack and to prevent it from happening. So we'll look at these uh, malops a bit further. I'd like to continue with the attack simulation now. So going back to the attacker, I now need credentials. And the system account, how am I going to get to the CEO's machine? I dump out those credentials, doing a simple um, password hash. The other thing I'm going to do is make sure that I can get back onto this machine. So I'm going to create, again, just the net command in Windows, a new administrative user called Ghost. And as you can see, if I dump those credentials out again, what we'll see is there's the Ghost account. So I now have an administrative account on that machine. The last step I want to do is do a, an auto root command. Basically, what this will do is root all my attack traffic through this compromised endpoint. And at this stage, I'd also like to point out that this is the only change that has happened on Robert's machine. He's got a little pop-up, it's from the print output, and that was to do with the um, DLL vulnerability that I exploited to get my enhanced privileges. Okay, so, yeah, let's background that session. And we do a very simple pass the hash attack. We take the password hash of the admin account that we know from Robert's machine, and we try and connect to Maria, the CEO's machine, um, using that password hash. It's a fairly common attack, uh, very simple to do, and it exists because we reuse passwords. So if your provisioning team do uh, use the same admin password, then this is the type of attack that will work. And what we should start to see is there'll be a new connection come in here from Maria's machine. And again, looking at this um, attack in flight, there is absolutely no change on the end user's interface. They can't see anything different. But we can see a new connection is coming there on 104. So while that downloads, let's have a look and see what has Cyber Reason seen. And this is where we start to really see the sort of true magic behind uh, a malop and why it matters. So now we have 11 opportunities at which to stop this. And you'll notice I have a larger bubble here. Now that's important because that means it affects more endpoints. And if I click on it, it was my pass the hash attack. So it was lateral movement because an attack moved from one machine to another. It was using the administrator account, the local admin, and it affected two machines. So to drill into that, I click on it and I can see very easy, this machine, Robert E. Win 10, had this as a parent process, which tried to make a network connection to Maria's machine using that account. Compromised credentials. Very easy to understand. And I'm able to see a timeline of when this all occurred, when we detected it, etc. I can see all those suspicions that we spoke about. Malicious ex uh, executable was loaded, floating code running in memory, past the hash, etc. I can visualize the, the um, processes that ran. So spool serve, remember that print pop-up? That was the vulnerability that I exploited there. Managed to run the suspicious and malicious processes. And we have some child process there of net.exe with some network communications. What is the command line, et cetera? What does that look like? I've got all that information here. What does the machine look like? Well, here's some machine information that we know in terms of Active Directory, uh, the user profile, et cetera. And if I need it, we uh, also include things like network communication if it's pertinent. But this is how we scope the attack and we can understand what's happening um, end to end for that past the hash. I don't need to do any further uh, correlation or understanding. I don't need to see 
local admin signed in, go and show me where those credentials were used from. It's all visualized and, and uh, shown here. And again, just to show you that this is actually from Excel, MS Build, et cetera, RegSVR, Firefox, the process injection that I did, we've seen every single step and it's very easy to understand. Interesting now, I've got Maria CEO, which means my attack has probably taken hold. So let's go back to the attacker machine and have a look. 104, session three has been opened. If we jump into the session, you'll notice that first, I am still a system account. Second, uh, I've done that one. I am on Maria's machine, Windows 7, there you go. And I'm on the CEO's machine as a privileged system account. I can do anything I like on here. So as the attacker, I'll probably find out, okay, where am I sitting at the moment? Um, let's go into here and have a look what's in our documents. Oh, thank you very much. There's a passwords folder. And it's a little bit of magic. I've now got all of her passwords because again, users shouldn't be doing this, but we know that it's all too common. So without using any fancy tools, I managed to literally just find a password file there. I've got her Facebook, her Gmail, her Twitter, her company email, etc. So as the attacker, I could spend some time gathering more data, um, spoofing accounts, whatever I needed to do. By the time I'd finished, I'm going to deploy ransomware to cover my tracks and wipe out all evidence that I was there and maybe help me, you know, uh, ransom off their data. I might be able to make some, some money out of the organization as well. So we run that and all it is is running a PS1. So it's PowerShell that EXE is running. However, cyber reason gets in the way and the machine is still usable. There's nothing here that looks like it's uh, untoward or that uh, it's, it's actually been encrypted. So what does that mean from a cyber reason perspective? Well, let's go back here and refresh this. So talking a little bit ahead, you'll notice already that I've got some bigger bubbles because the same attack was used on Maria's machine. I've got um, everything from the privilege escalation, the command and control, the lateral movement, um, the other compromises I did, and the ransomware. The ransomware, on one machine we saw ransomware behavior. So if we investigate that, again in this malop information screen, we can see that there was behavior exhibited from PowerShell.exe. Now, there's a pause button here, and this has actually been suspended. So ransomware has been suspended on this endpoint. Let's move this down, which is odd, because why would you suspend ransomware? Well, there may be legitimate business processes that are doing a full disk backup, doing full disk encryption, something like that, that may trigger our ransomware prevention. And what we don't want is as an organization, you disable your security software in order to back up your machine. It leaves you vulnerable, it leaves you unprotected. It's not a good security strategy. So we have the flexibility to say, actually, I'm gonna pause this and we can un unpause it should we want to, if it's legitimate. But in this case, we know it's malicious. So we'd probably do something like isolate the machine, etc., or kill the process. And just on that point, let me show you what that looks like. Let's pick a, uh, the Excel malloc, for example, because Excel is still running. So if we jump into this, and um, we can see excel.exe used a domain generation algorithm. It generated multiple alerts or multiple requests, DNS queries that were unresolved. So it's, domain, it's, it's the evidence of domain generation. And I want to do something like, I'm gonna respond, I want to remediate. On a single machine, that file, I want to kill the process. It really is that simple to kill these processes. And all we have to do is click here and as you can see, Excel stopped. It's gone. The other thing that we could do in terms of response, if I just run this here, if I ping Google, working fine, and I go back to any of the malops, but I'm going to specifically pick the lateral movement one because in a real world, if I saw lateral movement, if I saw past the hash attack, my first port of call would be to isolate these machines. So again, I hit the button on both of these machines. Thanks to cross-machine correlation, I can take this action. So literally I've clicked once, twice. That's it, isolated successfully. I go back to my machine here. Oops, sorry, excuse me. We can see there was a little pop-up 
sorry, you missed it. And we can see general failure. This machine is now isolated from the network. Still communicating with Cyber Reason. I'm still able to send commands to it, but it's not doing anything else until I allow it to. We can remote shell onto these machines, etc. cetera. Um, we can do further investigations. There's a wealth of remediation options that are available to you. But in a nutshell, that was a very quick attack simulation and demonstration of what Cyber Reason can bring. As I mentioned, the fact that we saw each of these bubbles, each of these malops that occurred, we were able to stop it at that point. We were able to uh, visualize the attack and we were able to mitigate as needed. And it's not just about these malops and the behavioral, et cetera, you know, looking at process injections, but we also have malware prevention. So when we look at fileless malware that was running, when we look at the PowerShell commands that was running, et cetera, we're able to have a look at these. This is MS Build, for example. If I investigate into that, it shows me that RegSVR32 ran this and did something. And what was that something that it did? Well, it was using PowerShell maliciously. It was building it in memory. It was executed by an office application. Um, you've got a wealth of information from the suspicions down to the evidence, et cetera. We can even see the command line that ran. So from here, we're able to say, okay, I know what file I'm looking for. I have the option to prevent this in future. I have, no, sorry, let me move that out the way. I have the option to prevent this or set a, a reputation that it was always generated a malop or never generate a malop, et cetera. So you really have a depth of information here if you need. You don't have to go to this level. You don't necessarily always have to drill in, but if you need further information, if you need to better understand the root cause, et cetera, this is, this is where you're going to spend a lot of your time. And actually, this is, a, this is part of our investigation, which I'm not going to talk too much about because Ahmed will be covering this in his session in terms of how do we investigate and what do we do. So I'd like to thank you all for your time. I'd like to thank you for watching. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure to demonstrate for you. As I said, please feel free to uh, drop questions, ask as we go. But for now, I'm going to hand over to Ahmed to run you through the um, threat hunting and investigation. So thank you very much. And uh, over to you, Ahmed. Thanks, Roberto, for this amazing uh, simulation. Really much appreciated. Uh, I, love, I love that, really. Uh, let's move to my part. My name uh, is Ahmed Qusiri. I was working as a malware analyst and reverse engineer. Uh, in my part, uh, I will show to you uh, how we can threat do threat hunting in cyber reason and what is the difference between us and the others. And it's vitally important because, as we can see, uh, the main objective of any ADR is just to, uh, to know uh, how we can reduce mean time of detection and how we can reduce mean time of response. And this is vitally important. So right now, let's, let's start with this use case. In our first use case, uh, this vendor, without mentioning the vendor name, uh, to can search for any encoded PowerShell command line or to search for any PowerShell with encoded command line, we need to run down this Splunk query. So we have here two issues. The first one, your sub team should be educated on how to use and read Splunk query. Uh, and if your sub team cannot do that, you need to invest and spend more time and money to learn them how and teach them how, sorry, teach them how we, they can use Splunk Query. And on the other hand, to write down this command line, we need to write down around 10 words. So it will increase mean time of detection and mean time response. You need to save each click and save each second just to detect and gather information here. So this is the first use case. The second use case here, another vendor, without mentioning the vendor name, but you need to have uh, a good uh, knowledge with uh, regular expression just to search for any PowerShell with encoded bar command line. But actually, there is no need to do something like that or even to touch the keyboard in Cyber Reason. Cyber Reason, it's too easy. Just select process, and from process, you can just write down encoded. So right now, you can search for any encoded command line overall, regardless to the uh, script language, or we can search for any PowerShell with encoded command line and get results. It's too easy. Just one click, and you can search for anything like that. So this is the first uh, 
uh, use case. So right now we have PowerShell, the encoded command line. We have a red line, which means it's suspicious, and we have a hive, which means it's malicious creation from one click. Right now, you can gather any information from one page without jumping from tab to another or without using any third part tools or something like that. You can check the forensics timeline with 100% accuracy. You can check, you know, the suspicious modules which we used. One of them, because we have a solid integration with MITRE ATT&CK, so we already in automatic way, we compare between the MITRE ATT&CK modules, tactics techniques, and what we have here. Okay, so right now we figure out there is a ma some, something matched between the MITRE ATT&CK and modules and this behavior. Uh, we have our evidence, which we use to uh, to prove there is a malicious operation. We're going to check even the coded command line and the encoded command line. Okay, so this is the encoded one and this is the decoded one. Uh, there is no need to take copy and use any uh, online uh, engine. You can search for, uh, you can check the SHA value. You can even download the file, by the way, from one click. Uh, there is no need to use any third part tool or jump to any other tab just to download the file here one click and you can download the file remotely you can even take immediate action from here and prevent this process uh, uh, to be executed or even you can for the future need you can even put this process in the black block list or allow list if you want so this is a uh, uh, difference between uh, others and cyber reason or even we can jump to another use case here so the same first vendor to search for in uh, for in uh, in uh, inappropriate local user a uh, local system account usage we need to write down this blank query again which contains at least 15 words let's imagine if you are under attack and you need to search or threat hunting to search for any uh, 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 abused uh, uh, abused uh, behavior from a local system account on these files you need to write down 15 words but here it's too easy again so from here you can just search and let's jump to investigation and from the investigation i can go and select process sorry let's clear that again i need to search for any machine as a user and this user was the local system true and this local system already opened uh, a process and from this process i can open image file so let's search for file name and contains w3wq.exe or the sql server the exe or httpd.exe or let's gen right uh, ng uh, Linux, yeah Okay, it's too easy. I only touch the keyboard only to write down the name of these four proceeds. But here you need to write down 15 words with this EDR. So you need to test what you have against what we can do. So let's move to another use case. For instance, here we can ask yourself, and I need to challenge you actually, can your EDR investigate on any NTFS file attributes and NTFS uh, file attacks. So as you can see, we, there is something called ADS. ADS, which means alternate that stream. And actually most of the attackers or and ransomware trying to hide the tools or hide itself inside this area. Because this area is a black area and there is no scanner or uh, traditional EDR or traditional antivirus scanners, they cannot scan this area. So can you, uh, your EDR can support this feature to search in this black area and figure it out if there is any hidden application or any hidden files inside this area or not maybe they can but believe me not like we can do we can do it in very easy way just using gui without any script select the process and search right down ntfs and here because we are using a predefined threat hunting modules it's easy right now to search for any uh, thing hidden, hidden, uh, hidden. Sorry, inside this EDS area. So we have 11 results, and we will not leave you alone. You can start with any, anything with zigzag line, which means suspicious, or or hive, which means a malicious operation from one click.
we have query you can check the forensics timeline uh, which shows you when exactly this query executed when and where and what is the duration time between this attack and the, the next step uh, you can check the modules which we discovered uh, which we used to discover this suspicious behavior you can check the evidence which we use to discover this malicious operation you can check the command line if you want from here you can check you know uh, the process name you can download this process dump or query or file remotely from one click there is no need to use any third party tools and you can check even if there is any WMI activity or if there is anything related to network activity or not and from one click you can prevent this process from this machine and from one click you can block list this process for any future purpose or any future needs it's too easy guys believe me i didn't see in the market any tools can offer what we can do let's move to the second use case investigate any hidden process the same so it's easy it's to, to search uh, uh, to search for any hidden process ask yourself can your adr do something like that believe me it's very hard and you need to pay money to the red team from the, the current uh, edr vendor to just come uh, send an expert to you and write a script to discover if there is any hidden process or not but here just from the gi process search for a hidden hidden process only true get results so right now our agent intercept any system calls between the kernel and the process if the, our agent discovers there is a process with hidden flag enabled so it means uh, there is uh, a hidden process here so again we will not leave you alone you can start with these red colors suspicious or malicious and you can take immediate action and the same the third use case investigate on process hidden by rootkit and this is most it's more difficult actually so as we know right now rootkit is it depends on which level of rootkit uh, the attacker uh, is using but any rootkit at the end of the day manipulate with the operating system kernel so it's easy right now instead of bring anyone from the forensics teams or from the red team or to, to use any third party so just write down a root hidden by rootkit that's it so it's our predefined rules to make it easier to you to just search for any attack techniques or any hacking techniques based on your thoughts in this use case we are going to search for any injected powershell process so it's easy again to search let's remove this one and this over the filter so you can check these items we have different type of category we categorize we, we, we make a category for each attacks so our hacking technique so you can search for the suspicious category any attacks related to suspicious categories or techniques related to suspicious category reputation and so on here we are going to search for any inject process inject So this is search for any post injections, okay? And even you can search for anything related to PowerShell or anything related to injection methods. You can select which methods if you want, if it's exploit or load uh, library or interpreter or what. So it's too easy to search for something like that. The same here, if you are going to search for anything or investigate anything on the network transmitted bytes, which means right now I will change the view I need to search for let's cancel this one and clear this one again i need to search and make a query build on the network activity so i need to search for any connections and this connections received bytes or transmitted bytes over or greater than 20 and change to make so right now if there is any process generated a traffic send it to outside greater than 20 make it will be mentioned here again we will not leave you alone you can start with anything with red color and by the way you can change the result in, uh, instead of the ip you can group it by the machine name to read the logs by the machine name not by the ip to figure it out which which is important and which is not here in this use case we are going to check the file with file name or internal file name so it's vitally important here so here right now i need to search for any file 
the file name with file name cmd for instance contains cmd so it will search for any file or pro existing in my system contains cmd so we have xcmd we have cmd asp to take text and so on just contains okay and i know most maybe you are in the future or right now you you, you received a journal from any cert team and they mentioned in clear way there is a, a spy tool or spy kit uh, the name of this spike it's cmd for instance so most of the attacker remove or rename the file with anything else to bypass this uh, uh, this notification so for instance if uh, i shared with you there is a malicious file the malicious file name is cmd so right now as an attacker i can change this file from cmd to any anything else so in this case we need to search in the internal pe header so we have something else called internal name and this is allow to us to search for anything inside the PE header itself. So I can search for anything contained in the PE header in CMD. And this is quite important and very strong uh, and solid feature to search inside the file content itself. I can also search for any process image file command line. So it's easy. So right now to select a process, this process generated a command line and you can search and write down here command line. So right, sorry. Uh, command line. So I can search right now for, on any command line executed in my backend. Contains a CMD or something like that even. So I can search for any command line CMD in its state, Q user, whatever. Or even I can search for any command line contains temp, temp words. So we can remove this one and write down command line again and we have a predefined rule here command line contains temp true let's search for that for instance so right now uh, the agent will search for any command line contains temp so if we open this process which generated a command line or uh, contains a command line this command line contains word uh, uh, temp uh, in the command line so here as you can see we have temp uh, word here let's be more specified and let's search for any command line uh, executed or running from the timber folder so it's easy right now to search for this one well, just remove and search for temp and we have our predefined threat hunting query which contains running from timber folder it's too easy guys come on let's admit on that okay so right now there is no need to write down in script. There is no need to write down any query or, or pay money to bring someone uh, from the red team to do anything for you. No, it's too easy. You can do anything by your own, just using the mouse. What else we have? We can search even if there is any process image file has suspicious external connections based on the MITRE attack. So it's easy right now just to move and go to the filter and write down external external connection based on the MITRE attack. That's it. There's no need again to write down any script or even do any integration integration with MITRE attack using any script or API. We already have the solid integration with MITRE attack modules. And even if we need to search for any post image has many record, not exists unresolved DNS query to detect any bootnet or any DGA inside your entity. So again, you can just jump here and write down many Report not exist. That's it. Believe me, my son can do investigation and, and threat hunting right now. But what you need to really to do right now, you need to understand what is the idea behind this attack. And it's easy just to click in this one. It will show to you the explanations and more information details about these techniques if you want. And you can do your homework and search more if you want. And the same for the uh, you can we can search for process has unresolved DNS. So instead of a common line, I need to search for a process here. So I can clear the query and search for a process. And in this one, I can go to filter and let's search for DNS, unresolved DNS. I just write down DNS here, unresolved DNS if I want. Or I can search for multiple record and not exist unresolved DNS. So okay, this is the second one. So I can search for both by the way, or I can search by one if I want. So I will search for multiple records if I want. Here, for instance, I want to search for any 
because has low time to read in this query and most of the ransomwares by oh my god we have in my lab i discovered there is a new excel sheet contains uh, multiple uh, non exist dns query so from one click here i can gather more information and i can take immediate action if i want just from one click okay also here if i want to search for any uh, process has low time to read dns query so i can do that so right now i can go and prevent this process uh, or i can block list this uh, uh, excel file by the way uh, let's search here let's move this one and search for TTL, let's write down TTL. Yeah, has low time to live in this query. Believe me, most of the intruders or putnets using this technique to bypass uh, and you know uh, uh, make a deception or uh, try to sneak out from your uh, DNS controls or DNS uh, queries. So I can search for anything like that if I want. If there is, if I have any t uh, low time to live in this query in my environment. Uh, in this case, let's move to this use case. Investigate on post has tactics techniques number 1483 domain generation algorithm based on MITRE attack. So it, is it easy to search based on the tactics techniques number? Yes, I can do that. Yes, we have here PowerShell and Netcat and a lot of free process with low time to live. But let's move to this one and go to filter and search on T one four yeah we have a, we can search by miter attack module number hacking techniques module numbers uh what else we can do here we can investigate on process has literal movement high internal outgoing embryonic connection rate what's embryonic connection rate let's search and do uh, and ask cyber reason so it's easy right now to get here. Go, go here and remove this one let's open the filter and the filter let's go to the literal movement section so we have different techniques of literal movement section we have here high internal outgoing embryonic connection rate what does that mean it, it means more than 25 percent of the internal connections this process creates doesn't receive a response this is the embryonic means so it's easy right, right now to apply and search for anything like that if i want inside my entity here ah this is the last use case right now i know most of you guys will ask me how we can use cyber reason in manual way without using anything predefined using your systems how we can do something like that because we have again netcat this attack i uh, initiated yesterday and again we can check and take immediate action from here if you want to isolate the, ma the machine with uh, which is responsible for this one it's easy right now to just uh, select the owner machine from here and i can get result and based on the result i can select the machine and i will isolate this machine from one click and i know uh, refer to shows to you how we can use our isolation techniques which isolate the whole machines from one click but here in my use case, I'm going to build to you a complex threat hunting query using GUI without using any script, without using any query, and based on your thoughts and your analysis, not based on not based on our predefined tools. Okay, so this is the machine names which contains, you know, uh, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the last attack. And from one click here, you can just select the machine and you can isolate this machine in, uh, from here. So let's clear the query and search and build a complex query. Let's assume right now you want to search for any machine as a process. And this process contains malicious partial based on, sorry, based on malicious activities. So partial malicious activities it's easy to recognize this malicious behavior uh, so let's use this filter right now so it will show to you right now how many machines contain uh, PowerShell with malicious activities right so we have right now 100 process and it's easy right now to check the forensic timeline and take immediate action but actually I need to do more investigation so I need to check if 
there is any partial, any endpoint contains partial with connection to outside. Let's check and get the result. Sorry, I'm in VBN. That's why there is a delay, small delay, because I'm using VBN right now. So right now it will sort down to the internal IPs and the external IPs which the PowerShell communicated to. And as you can see, the owner proceeds only PowerShell, right? So let's right now change the view to group by owner machine. So right now, instead of search or read the internal IP, I need to read by the machine name. So this is the internal IPs which generated the connection to outside using or by PowerShell. But let's ungroup and return back to the ID uh, uh, result. Right now, I need to sort down only the destination ID. So right now, I, I will select remote IVs. And right now, I will see only the uh, destination malicious IDs. So from one click, it will sort down the destination malicious IDs only. So this is the final result. I can easily right now block these IDs from my gateway, but let's do something more sophisticated and let's reverse back the connection and check how many endpoints inside my entity communicated with these IDs, even not through PowerShell. So right now I can search for connection remote addresses again and get results. So right now, Cyber Reason will show to you how many endpoints inside your entity communicated to the, with these IPs, even not through PowerShell. So this is the internal IPs. This is the destination IPs, which we already sorted down before. And let's check the owner process. We can find here certificate utility, we can find here PowerShell, we can find here SVC host, and actually the result become 500. So right now I have the full visibility on my network and we can discover how many compromised machines inside my entity and how many compromised uh, process in easy way. Just for using this deep complex query. Believe me, to build something like that using any traditional ADR in the market, you are going to write down a huge script and it will consume your time and consume your time, uh, money and consume your health. So it's easy right now to check or it's easy right now to change the view group by to machine name to check and read the result by the machine name. It's too easy right now to discover the results. It's easy right now to take immediate action. I can right now block the connection I can do a lot of things. So this is the complex query. And by the way, the backend query, which are used behind this graph, it's already mentioned here in the our address bar. But again, there is no need to write down any script or query. You can do that using the GUI only. And actually, you can search using on anything using these parameters, using, using these uh, factors, parameters, and more actually from here. And if you get our solution, we already have our predefined uh, threat hunting complex query, if you want. It's already embedded with our system. And you can search for anything if you want from here. You can resistance registry or something like that. So thanks for your time today. I hope this session was informative to you guys. Thanks to be prepared to. And thanks for everyone. Have a nice day. Please, if you have any questions, please send to my email. Uh, anytime. Thanks.